Welcome to World of Marketing Podcast, a Foster Web Marketing production. Here's your host, Tom Foster. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the World of Marketing, where I, Tom Foster, talk with industry leaders about marketing mindset and business growth. This episode is brought to you by my company, Foster Web Marketing. Foster Web Marketing is the premier provider of bespoke websites, marketing video, and strategic solutions for elite law firms prestigious medical practices, and distinguished professional service businesses. Our unparalleled web technology and marketing systems set the gold standard in the industry, catering exclusively to a discerning clientele who demand the best. But today, I'm excited to have Robert Ingalls from Law Pods as our guest. Law Pods is a company that makes podcasting easy for busy attorneys. As a former litigator, Robert understands the complexities of marketing your firm. His team is trusted by international firms ranging from McGuire Woods and Blank Rome to local firms like the law offices John T. Orcutt and Marcelino and Tyson. With Law Pods, attorneys can reach their audience over a new medium, position themselves and their firm as thought leaders in their space, and create a growing library of content that answers key questions from prospective and current clients. We'll be discussing Law Pod's simple process and how they can help attorneys create successful podcasts. And here he is, the man himself, Robert Ingalls. Robert, thank you so much for joining the World of Marketing Podcast. Hey, Tom, it is such a pleasure to be here. I've been following your work for uh, probably more years than I've actually been doing my work here. Uh, You've been in this space a really long time, so it's cool to finally collaborate. Thank you. And, uh, you know, when we met, I was you know, like, I love your setup. You know, that's not like if you guys aren't watching this video, you got to watch the video because you got to see the guy's p- podcast setup because it's so professional. And it when we talked last, I was so uh, inspired and encouraged. Like I've made them redo our entire podcast studio. It's not, so they're working on that, making that like cool like yours. Dude, this is it's so cool to be able to come in here every day. Like this is where I go to work because this all started out as a hobby and I was just like buying little things, and trying them out. Right. And, <laughs> and now all of this stuff, if, if I hadn't figured out how to monetize this, this would, pro- a lot of this will probably still be here. It'd just be this really expensive hobby. And so it's, uh, I'm so grateful that I figured out a way to intersect the things that I enjoy doing because I come in here and I sit down and I've got, I mean, you should just see what's in front of me. It's even more like it's, it's cooler than what's behind me. I've got my mixing board and my, well, send me a picture. Send me a picture. I will. And like, I've got a teleprompter right here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm like making eye contact with you while making eye contact with the camera. It's in my lighting. I love it. It's so cool. That's great. I'd like to see that set up. So send me a picture of that and we'll put that in the video. Okay. So tell us about your journey because I know what you did, but I want everybody else to know to becoming, uh, to starting law pods and, and, and whatnot. So tell me the journey. Yeah. I mean, as you said, I was, uh, a, a former litigation attorney. I went to school to be a criminal defense attorney. It was something I'd had my eye on from a very young age. Uh, you know, I had a couple of years where I chased philosophy and religion in college, but that was very short lived. And, but for the most part, I had my eye on that. I liked it from a young age. I grew up in outside Washington, North Carolina, uh, blue collar family. And the idea of being a lawyer was so sexy at that point. And, you know, with back then, like they all had the Mercedes with the big hood ornament. And I just, you know, going into court and seeing them was, I don't know, I just thought like, wow, that would be the coolest thing. And, you know, my mom, we followed a lot. It wasn't even called true crime back then, but it was essentially what it was. All the stories that were happening. And so we watched that really closely. And then I got into college. I enjoyed it. I decided uh, to go to law school focused on criminal defense the whole time. And then I got out of school and started practicing. And damn it, it did not take long for me to think I'm not sure I made the right choice here. And most of that was the the weight 
mm-hmm. of the types of cases I was dealing with. And the the general stuff didn't really bother me or keep me up at night. The larceny from Walmart and, you know, the possession and little things, but it was the violent crime. Mm-hmm. The uh, the assault on a female stuff was the, the stuff that really weighed on me. And I was on the appointed list and I got a lot of those. And that those were the ones that did keep me up at night. And, you know, I felt like I'm the kind of guy that likes to get along. I like to just have a pretty good relationship and be pretty happy with everybody around me all the time. It's just what I see as a good life. And on a day-to-day basis, I am showing up and being the champion for this person where we have this victim on the other side who in many instances I felt like really was a victim. And it's my job. It's my ethical responsibility to champion this person, undermine the credibility of the other person, and essentially be the villain in the movie. And, oh, they, you know, the way that I could feel that energy and I understood it. And it, uh, it, it, I, I made it almost three years, but there was a, just a couple of cases in particular that I dealt with. Uh, one of them was just a consult that I took with my mentor and it had to do with uh, child pornography. And my mentor explained to me what that case was going to look like, what the discovery process was going to look like. And I just kind of threw my hands up and I was like, I don't want to live the rest of my life like this. I just, <laughs> this is not who I want to be. Uh, and I was, uh, at that point I pivoted, I started doing just general civil stuff, kind of almost anything that I could get my hands on just to feel things out, but mostly general civil, but it didn't take long, a few years before the, just the constant conflict of it was heavy for me. And it was weighing on my mental health. It, I, during this period of time, I'd gotten married. We'd started talking about having a family and I just couldn't see myself balancing all of that, being a good husband, being the kind of father I wanted to be, and also continuing this career, which I, I, with all of this stress and all of this work and all of these hours, I still hadn't even figured out how to make money doing it, which added to the stress. And so I was looking for a way out uh, at at, at that point. And I didn't know, I had no idea that we were going to fast forward, you know, almost nine years and I'd be sitting here doing this, but I knew I had to go somewhere. But you did that just on that note, you were like, how do I make money on this? How do I get clients? How do I get, and is that when you came up? Well, I'm going to do my own podcast. Is that because you started doing it on just on your own, right? Yeah, man, I wish, I wish it was that direct, but I mean, it never is. Right. (laughs) Right. Uh, No, I, Along the lines of, you know, all of the stress and then we're family planning. It was when my wife kind of told me we're seriously family planning, like essentially somebody might live here next year. Right. And that was, that was the moment that kind of sent me on a path because I kind of had a little bit of a proper freak out. Uh, I think mostly unbeknownst to her at the time, but I just, I was like, I can't do this. And I sat down and I made a list of things that I just had to get together. And at the top of the list was money. Because for me at that time, like without that, none of the rest of it mattered. And so I read a book about money. And I, up to this point in my life, I wasn't the kind of person that, uh, at the time I would have called it self-help. I just wasn't that kind of person yet who read those kind of things. But Mm -hmm. I knew I had to do something. And so I read that book. And then they had another book about leadership. And so I, I read that one. And that book said, we have a podcast you should listen to. It's called Entree Leadership, Dave Ramsey. And I, I never listened to a podcast. This is September 2015. And I, I took out my phone. I know exactly where I was sitting. I took out my phone and I listened to the podcast. I listened to one episode. It wasn't really necessarily for me, but I'm already there. I listened to like the next recommendation. And Tom Bilyeu was the guest the first guest on the show called Awesome Office, Tom Billy, founder of Quest Nutrition. And it was all about mindset 
a concept I'd never really heard about, or at least never noticed. And it, it hit me. And the, the real takeaway that I heard was you can do anything you want with your life. It doesn't matter where you've been or what you've done. What matters is what you decide you want to do today and what you're willing to do to get it. And I mean, that's trite. We've heard it our entire life. But I, I heard it. I heard it. And, and I thought, I, I think I can do anything. And I had no idea what it was going to be at all. But I did know that I really liked the medium immediately listening because I'm able to access this conversation that this amazing founder had with this other person in California on their own time. And I'm on my own time and I can just listen to them, get this information that just changes the way I think. And so within 30 days, I bought a thousand dollars worth of podcast gear. This mic I'm talking into right now was part of that purchase. And I, I sat down in my spare room and I was like, I want to figure this out. Uh, you know, I don't know if you can tell, but I, I feel like I have something to say. And I just started tweaking mixers because this was back when you actually still had to use a mixing board. Mm -hmm. And I'm learning how to do that, making all the mistakes, figuring it out. I loved it. I was intoxicated by it. And I ended up starting a podcast out of my law firm. And that was my first uh, venture into doing it myself. I started at my law firm. I had a lot of fun with it. It was, it was very messy. Um, I had a hard time actually talking about the law on my law podcast because, surprise, that's not really what I cared about. And But it was a really nifty introduction to the space. But I also found people were listening to it. They would go to my website and they would tell me that they'd listened to it. And, oh, yeah, that helped me understand X, Y, Z. And I was like, this is really interesting because I didn't know if anybody would actually listen, like who would listen to a law podcast. And I learned that when people are researching me, and they, have the, like, they have questions. Mm -hmm. And I learned that they were going and using this to get answers to those questions. And then when they would talk to me, they already had a sense for who I was. And it made that conversation easier. Like they were already, uh, like the wheels were already greased a little bit for the conversation. And that was really interesting. And I just found it was cool. I was like, people are listening to my podcast, which you have a podcast. You know how cool that feels when people are like, I listen to your podcast. That's, a, that's my yeah, love language. 100%. So yeah, that was how it, that's how it first got started. I, I hadn't decided at that point, okay, I'm going to leave the law and make podcasts because my mindset was not there. At, at that point in time, I had a friend who would come to my office at night and we'd sit and play with the gear together and learn together. Shout out to Josh Goodman. Love that guy. And he, one night, and I, I've got the episode, like I still have it recorded. He said, I predict that in a year you're going to be doing this for other lawyers. You're going to be helping them. Never crossed my mind. He was wrong. It was two years. But it, I, at that time, just didn't, like, who am I? I thought, in my mind, people that do that are people that went to school for marketing, communications. Like they're special, they're different, they're a certain kind of person. And so I didn't see myself as that at the time. Uh, so it took me, it took a little while, but eventually I just kept doing it. I was going to co working spaces and helping people there just because I wanted to. And people were just seeing me everywhere I went. I was doing, I became the guy who does it, which I mean, you are what you repeatedly do, right? Mm -hmm. And Bill Powers is a criminal defense attorney in Charlotte. And I saw him at a networking event. And he said, I see that you're doing all this podcasting stuff. He's like, would you help me do one? And I was like, I would love to. I would love to. That'd be super fun. And he said, can you come by in the morning? I mean, who doesn't want a client like that? Hired on the spot. And that was my first client. And like the business didn't have it. I didn't have a business. There was no name. And he gave me my first shot. I made his podcast for him, made just kind of messy, figured it out. And it went from there. I was like, I think I have something here. I'm going to like try to see if other people will hire me. And you were still practicing. You were a practicing lawyer at the time, right? So you're kind of like doing yeah. that, not happy doing that. Yeah. And this other thing was like, you know, just a little seed 
um, that you didn't even really recognize as something that you could do. But yeah, well, at that point too, I was kind of on my way out of law. I had, you know, that 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 baby that was theoretical became very real mm-hmm. and um, very expensive. And but I knew I was like, okay, I've got to rip this law bandaid off. I've got to get out. It's not. This just isn't going to work. And so I started closing up the practice and trying to hustle about and make money. I was charging people a little bit of money here and there to like teach them how to make a podcast, but it was peanuts. And I had not found a real consistent revenue stream yet. And things got really tight, like really, yeah. really tight. And, right. uh, and uh, eventually my wife and I kind of had a proper sit down where she was like, look, I want you to trace your dreams. I want you to be happy but something's got to give. She was right. totally right. We need some and, money here. Right. right, right. Like li- live your dreams, but pay the bills. Right. And so that was right around the same time I found this first client and I went and found a full-time job. I got a job in compliance at a bank with a um, a buddy from law school, was building out a team, just really good timing. And I worked there for two years while I was able to build this on nights and weekends. And um, August, or not August, March 2nd, 2020 was the day I was able to quit the job and go all in. Wow, that is great. And there's so many nuggets in that story. Like one, and this is great for everybody listening because, and I talk to lawyers all the time and I can tell that they're, you know, many of them are a lot like you. They have, you know, they're struggling with, um, uh, what they're doing, you know, they're struggling with that whole, whether it's boring, whether it's, you know, too transactional, whether it's like, I don't really enjoy being a criminal defense lawyer for the reasons that you said, um, or, or they just have other interests. And what you have done is like, just like you listened to other, you know, other people giving you permission to chase your dreams. Like what you're saying that that I want everybody to hear is that you're not stuck being a lawyer if you don't want to be a lawyer, right? Just because you went to law school, just because, you know, you thought you wanted to be a lawyer all your life, when you're actually in it, you don't have to do that. There's other things that you can do. And the whole point, follow your passion, because whatever you're going to be passionate about, is where you're going to make the most money. You're not, if you're not passionate about practicing law, then you're, and you're doing it, you're just not going to be able to, you're not going to be successful. Would you agree with that? Yeah. And and it's, where can you help the most people with your unique skill set? That's how it was for me is I, when I was helping people, and I, I definitely did, I helped a lot of people in tough situations while I was practicing law, and I feel very good about that. But it took a lot more from me than it gave, and it wasn't sustainable. And then I found this area where some days it's effortless, where I can just give, I can have a 30 minute conversation sometimes with somebody, and I can provide so much value to them. Just, I mean, a strategic comment, you know, very well, having a legal marketing company, Mm -hmm. one 30 minute strategic conversation can be worth tens of thousands of dollars to somebody who needs to understand and work through direction and understanding how can I provide value? That was an incredible thing for me to come to understand. I can take my unique gifts, the things that I'm really interested in and provide sometimes exponential value to, you know, as a return for people. And when you can do that, it is, uh, it it makes the rest of your life a lot more um, uh, palatable, navigable, just easier to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because yes, hundred percent. Okay. So give people, you know, everybody, we're giving you permission, whoever's listening to do what your dreams are. Or to, if you're not happy with what you're doing, like we're giving you permission to look elsewhere, right? Yeah. Because it's not like you were like, oh, I'm, not, I'm, I, you know, I'm unhappy doing this type of law or, or being a lawyer, period. Because you said, I tried this kind of law, I tried this kind of law, and just none of it, you know, spoke to you. 
Um, and you're not going to, it might not be an exact, oh, here's what I'd rather do. Uh, and because you didn't know it right away, right? You didn't know it. You didn't, you, you couldn't put the pieces together. And it's a lot like how I built this company, right? How I built uh, Foster Web Marketing. Like it started off as a hobby and, 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 but I was passionate about building websites. And I met somebody that launched me and pushed me and made me, you know, feel like I could do it. But it's a, back, it's a journey back. of discovery. Exactly. And that is one of the, uh, and you said some other things about mentors. And um, don't be afraid to reach out to people that you respect. In They don't have to be another lawyer or a doctor. They can be in other areas, but you just have respect for them and get their advice and opinion, you know? Um, cause they could open up your mind to things that you haven't thought about before. And so, oh, absolutely. So who are, you've named a couple people, but who are some of your biggest mentors? Oof. Uh, that's, that's great. I mean, throughout my career, there've been so many, uh, you know, when I got into this space, I feel like a lot of my mentors were, uh, were people I don't know, which is such a cool part of the moment that we're in. Uh, you know, books have been around for a really long time. You can always read somebody's book, but it's very different than being able to spend literally hundreds of hours consuming their content on your specific issues. And the people in the beginning, Tom Billy was a big one. It was a lot of mindset work that I needed to learn because getting my mindset ready was the most important thing to be able to even take the step to do it. And then, you know, Tony Robbins is an OG. He's been around in the space forever, but uh, following his work was really helpful. Gary V, I think, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he gets a lot of hate from people, but his finger is on the marketing pulse. I mean, you can, he, he's, he's not sure. That guy's going to evolve. That's why. And he says what he wants to say. That's yeah, why. But he gets it both. Yeah. He's, he is so frequently right about his predictions on the future. And just, I mean, he was hot on podcasting way early. I mean, he was pushing musically is what it was called at the time, which is now TikTok, like before anybody had even heard of it. And he, and he was really helpful to teach me how to think about attention, mm -hmm. how to think about approaching marketing and what it really is the goal of it. What are we trying to do? Why are we doing it? Who are we doing it for? How does it turn into money? And, and now when I look at the world, that's what I see. You know, I look at a piece of marketing and that's, that's I'm, I'm always doing that analysis. And he was a big part of that. And then getting into this, you know, space specifically, uh, you know, early on, uh, Chris Dreyer, I relied on him as I was figuring out how to actually run a business in the legal marketing space. Uh, we connected years ago and he had, I always found his story fascinating. Uh, he was, you know, a detention uh, teacher at a high school and was, learning SEO kind of himself on the side and then worked for a company. It was like, I think I can do this myself. And uh, so I, when I was going through those growing pains in the early years of trying to figure things out and like, what the hell am I even doing? Um, he was somebody great to rely on, but it was also nice to hear from people like, Hey, none of us knew what the hell we were doing because you don't know that in the beginning, you don't realize right. that everybody started kind of in a similar area of just, yeah, we're figuring it out. We sold it to one client. We figured out what worked. We sold it to another and we just built it little by little, made the mistakes, got it ugly. Everybody makes mistakes too. That's the other thing. Yeah. Well, you exactly. think you got to be perfect. You're afraid to make a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't let and that stop you. You can't you let earn it. mistake stop you from trying again. And maybe it's the same thing, but you just got to adjust um, and, you know, do it differently. But yeah. don't let mistakes stop you, you know? When it's it's like thinking you can be a good fighter without getting punched in the face a bunch. That's great, great. Like, yeah. that's just how it works. You got to go, you got to step in there and take your licks and, and be good with it. And then, but what's cool about that is as you repeatedly do it, it, it becomes normal. It's part of the process. Of course, I'm going to get punched in the face. How you win a fight if you don't get punched in the face sometimes? And, uh, but you got to earn it. Yep. Jason Abraham, who is the uh, managing partner of Hupian Abraham, which is the biggest 
law firm, personal injury law firm in the Midwest in three states, 11 offices, started from one. And he says, you've got to fail 50% of the time in order to be successful. And he's a $2 billion firm. So you've got to fail half the time and you have to go into it knowing that you have to continue to try new things or try things differently and just know, okay, it might not work, but you can't let that get you down. You got to keep going and keep going and keep going. And that's that's some great advice for especially lawyers that are uh, and doctors that are um, very weary of it. Yeah. And, you know, the other thing about, you know, lawyers is that um, they don't, they don't um, take enough risk. They don't take enough risk. Well, we're so risk averse. Like it's built right. into us from like day one in law school. It's just issue spot. Look for where it could go wrong. Right, right. And yeah, they rehearse a lot of difficulty. And um, and it, and that doesn't work in marketing. That mm-hmm. does not, that mentality doesn't work in marketing. And the other thing is, you know, you've got to trust other things that have worked for people. But that doesn't necessarily that means that that's going to work for you, right? Uh, you have a different personality, right? You have a different character. You have a completely different. So just because Joe Schmo did a billboard, that doesn't mean that if you throw up a billboard that's <laughs> the same, that's going to work for you, right? Right. And one of the things that I think lawyers really struggle with, and and I understand it, having been on that side of it, is you're going to spend money. Marketing is a place where you're going to spend money and you're not going to see all of it come back. And it's a return investment yourself. It's not a cost. That's the other thing they look at. Right. This is a cost. Right. And, and and it's not, it's not like paying your employees or those are hard costs or, you know, like your insurance, those are hard costs, but your marketing is an investment in yourself. And that's absolutely. Well, and it's and, like the stock market. Some things pay off, some things don't. Well, and, and that was exactly the point I was going to say is the you've got to go in, you've got to move around, you've got to be active in multiple spaces. And in one moment, one thing's not going to pay off. It's just not. And because that's how it works. But when you're moving, you're agile and you're consistent, the whole thing comes together. But it's hard to see that. You're like, wait, I spent you know, $10,000 over here and it didn't, you know, turn into $30,000 in in four months. That's really upsetting. And I get that. I've been there. We're spending $500 on something was just shattering if I couldn't figure out a way to recoup that quickly. And, but you do see that difference in a firm as they grow, where they, where that light bulb goes off, where it's like, okay, I see, you know, we're going to invest in this, you know, content marketing, that's not going to turn around tomorrow. You are building something that you know right. starts yeah. to return exponentially over time. And that's hard, though. It's really hard to get your head around when dollars are super tight. And what you're doing is you're creating your brand that, that you want to have grow, you know, uh, exponentially. And, right. and, you know, we teach omni-channel marketing, right, where you've got – Ultimately, all the things that you're doing, you are branding yourself out there. And you said it earlier, and and one of the channels is podcast marketing, right? Podcast is a marketing channel. And people will, they will go, just like they're going to go look at your videos, they're going to watch your podcast, and they're going to be like, wow, I like this guy or or gal or not. Right, or I don't. Right. And they're they're going to do that whether you whether you know it or not, and that may might and other people won't look at the podcast. But the point is that people look at podcasts, and that is why uh, you're in business, and why I do it is because I get feedback all the time from you know I saw your podcast, I saw your podcast, I get you know tons of requests to be a guest on the podcast. Um, because this is a medium that all lawyers should be doing, just like um, having your website, you know, right? You got to have a website. Uh, And and truly, you need to have a podcast, in my opinion. And those lawyers that do, that get past their own insecurities or whatever, 
and say, yeah, I'm going to do this podcast. Because the lawyers, they got a lot to say. And they're great at, at, at interviewing and whatnot. And what you bring to the table is you take away all of the stuff that they're scared of, right? Like the technology, like how to do it. You know, you've already, you know, you've already walked through the minefield. And so they can just, you can just tell them, hey, you know, here's how you do it. And they don't have to worry about blowing a bunch of money on equipment that doesn't work or outdated or, you know, you take care of all that for them, right? Yeah, we were very committed to one of our taglines. You do the talking, we do the rest. And I, I learned that early. I mean, having had my own law firm, I understood, I saw what it took to produce a, a good product. And it, it speaks to my personality. I, I just feel like when I'm making my own podcast, I feel like it has to be perfect. I want to like get sure. everything just right. And I saw how much time and effort that took the learning curve that it took. And that is not a sustainable model for a firm. If you have the time and energy to do that and get good enough at it, then you should probably come work with me because I think that you're much more suited for that. And so we wanted to create an experience that created as minimal of a disruption in a lawyer's day as possible. And so it's, we're not trying to set up a studio at your office and have people come in and sit down and set up cameras and lights and uh, -uh none of that. When they, when clients start working with us, we ship them a USB microphone that sounds indistinguishable from the one I'm talking into right now, headset. So they don't have to worry about echo and a microphone stand. And whenever they are ready, everybody has a webcam already. And so when they're ready to book a podcast, they go to their calendar that we set up for them. They grab a time that works for them. They enter their guest. Everybody gets an email. They show up. We're on the call. We check their mic levels. We check their cameras. We get everybody situated. We record it for them. So they take the time to just sit down, have the conversation, hang up, and never think about it again. Uh, a lot of our attorneys in like the trial lawyer space, we have a, a big, uh, big clientele there. Mm -hmm. They are never listening to it. Like they never see it again. And that was interesting for me because we started out with really small firms. I mean, like solo shops and handful of attorneys, but within the first couple of years, we were able to bump up to those McGuire woods, just wild to me. <laughs> like these are firms that would have shredded my law resume. And, but working with them, the approval process is pretty grueling sometimes. And then getting into this trial lawyer space where, I mean, you know how these attorneys are, it's just move, 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 let's go. And the, one of our first ones, Matt Dolman was one of our first in that space. I love this guy. He, uh, I said, I kept sending him the audio and then I'd follow up and be like, is this approved? This is approved. He's like, I was there. I know what I fucking said. And <laughs> I was like, Hey, fair enough, man. And a right. lot of our clients in that space are like that now. Yeah. And, and that was cool because it, they, they learned in the beginning that they could trust us to do good work. And then they just set us to go do it. And, you know, so it's simple to sit down, have that conversation and then be as involved as you want to through the rest of the process. But then that simple conversation that we're like, we're having right now turns into the podcast audio on all the platforms. It turns into a, a full length video for YouTube, but turns into video clips with branding and captions on Instagram reels and YouTube shorts and TikTok and LinkedIn and wherever, all from that 30 minute conversation that you're having, it just proliferates into all of this content. And our job is to make it that simple. And you provide all that. You do all that for them. Yes. You, yeah. You they never think up. about it again. And you work with uh, the social me their social media um, pages and you work with their website, right? And their agency and their provider, right? Yeah, it it de depending on who they have, you know, we will also post it to their like we'll do the social media distribution for them if they want. And so whatever level the firm is, if they have a social media company, a web company, we will provide all those assets to them as throughout production so they're able to roll it out themselves. And you work with one and so we met, you work with one of our elite clients, Dirk Derek, Derek oh, Long. I mean, love that guy. Yeah, he's fantastic. He is he's another one that built, you know, from one. Now he's got 13 offices, I think. 
He's all over the place. He owns South Carolina. I mean, like yeah. he's just done a fantastic job. Yeah, he's a fun guy to talk to. Uh, and he's a perfect podcast guy. Perfect because he's just who he is. You know, he's just such yeah. a cool guy. He is. And I mean, look at him. He's so slick. I know. He's great. Um, <laughs> and if you don't know Dirk Derek, everybody go to Derek Law and check this guy out because he is he's fantastic. Um, and talk about a you know, mentor. So all of you PI lawyers that are young and trying to figure it out, go talk to Dirk Derek. He'll talk to you. And he'll tell you um, whatever you need to know. Same with Jason Abraham. Loves talking to young lawyers, getting started, and and are having issues. Well, I will. I'll take a second to plug Derek. He is uh, launching a private podcast for members of the South Carolina um, Plaintiffs Bar. Wow, um, it's private, so it's only for the plaintiffs bar. It's called the Appraisers Podcast. Um, just uh, email. Uh, his office if you want access to that and they'll get they'll get you hooked up for that that's great and um it was uh, i just want to point this out and and this note you, we were talking about how uh certain agencies or web companies are easier to and i'm not gonna you don't need <laughs> i won't name any names <laughs> uh but i would just like to for you to express what you said about us um, in in that vein and working, you know, because you got to work with the agency to get the clips yeah. on their website and all that stuff. So, yeah, well, we work with, you know, we don't do websites. We don't build them. Uh, we post to them once we have access to it. That's no problem. But we're not building the pages. We stay in our lane when it comes to that. And so when we are starting a podcast with a firm, we – always really push them to make sure it's on the website. That's a big part of the value. People right. need to find it when they're looking for information. And so when we're launching a show, standard part of our process is working with their web development team, whoever that is. Sometimes it's, you know, uh, um, a college kid who they've, they've brought in to do it. Sometimes it's a, a huge national agency. And it is consistently one of the more difficult parts of our job. Uh, just getting a, getting a response in any type of timely fashion to the most basic things, because we are very systematized when we're launching, like, here's what we do here. We have this, 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 and this, and we're ready. And here it is. What are you going to do with it? And just getting a response has been such a hassle. And then trying to get somebody on a call who actually understands what we're doing. We're usually faced with a representative who then has to go back and take it to a dev and uh, well, and, and then sometimes they'll send us an email and they'll be like, well, we put in a support ticket. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, how are you going to tell me you put in a support ticket to your own team to, to answer my question? Like, I don't even care if that's how the sausage is made. Right, 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 uh, right. But like, don't, no, don't tell me that. Um, and that was, that was pretty wild to me coming up in this space uh, it, it, to see how some of the, how some of the companies that were doing very well in the space w were acting. And I was like, we can, we can do better than this. If this is the bar in this space, I am confident that, that we are going to be able to do really well here. But when we started working on, on Dirk's podcast and we got to the point where it was time to get it on the website, it was uh, John, I was working with John on your team, right? Yeah, John I mean, it was, it was just quick. It was, let's set up a call. Let's talk about X, Y, Z. This is what we need. Okay, perfect. We're going to go do that. We set up a call a couple more days later. All right, we did that. Here we are. Here's what we need. Here's your access. I think we talked twice. Yeah. And it, all inside of like a week. And, and, and it worked. And that was refreshing because it is so rarely like that. It's usually really drawn out. And, and I don't get it because I've built a ton of websites. I got into it. I built my own website when I had a law firm uh, for law pods. I built the original website we had that I used for the first like four years of the business. Um, it is not as difficult as some people try to make it out to be. Now, I know that they there's a lot of complication that gets into it as you get higher level, but it's not that difficult at it the end of the day. It shouldn't, you know, it, like one it company. Should where, be. It, it should, should be. be. 
especially right. the kind of pages that we're building. And you were building something even more complicated as we needed a login page to get into a private podcast. That's even more complicated. Yeah. Most of them are glorified blog pages. It's a blog page where each episode has its own post. You get in there, you've got a player, you've got a video. It's not that complicated. And, you know, not long ago, we had a client that we got on with the, the web team and they were like, yeah, we can get this page turned around in a few weeks. What are you talking about? This is a couple hours of work here. You know, it, it's not, it's not much. And, um, and so that, that was, it was refreshing. Um, uh, and, and I, uh, so I, yeah, when we talked, when Thank we were talking, I was just telling that. you all of that. <laughs> and that made me very proud of my own company that, uh, they didn't disappoint you or your client or Dirk, you know, and we got that turned around very quickly. Um, and that's just really like, no, what agency or web company you're working with no different than um you know work with a podcaster that that knows what they're doing and that can help you very quickly get your podcast out there and can help mentor you on how to do better podcasts. So it's yeah. not right. That's the other thing that you do is like give them instruction on how to do it better and, and feedback and whatnot. Right. And, and think about your strategy. That's right, the right. thing that I see go wrong more times. You know, when I see somebody say we did a podcast that didn't work, I can almost guarantee them. They started without once. a strategy, right? Yeah. They, they may have done it once, but so frequently they didn't stop and have the most basic of conversations. Why are we doing it now? Usually it's, Oh, cause we want to, we want to get clients. Okay. That's not a good why. I mean, high level. Absolutely. Of course we want to get clients. We want to make money, but who is it for? Who are you making this for? Who will listen to this? Because it's not the same. I have clients all over the spectrum. Sometimes they're doing it for referral sources. They're educating a referral source. They're talking about trial lawyer knowledge and insider information and hard stuff and, and tactics. And that's for other lawyers to listen to who will get to know that lawyer, like them, trust them, send them referrals, bring them co-counsel, buy their book when they write it. And But frequently, it's going to be for a prospect to nurture that lead. You're talking about the FAQs, the things that people are you know, keeping them up at night. Can, uh, I'm thinking about leaving my spouse. Can I take half the money before I tell them? Like all of these burning questions you know people have, that's what we're talking about. And so we have to stop and we have to think, why am I making this? Who am I making it for? What does that person want to know? Am I the person to tell them? Can I consistently and reliably show up and, and provide this information to them? And then how does this whole thing turn into money at the end of the day? Because I've seen legal marketers, established legal marketers talk about podcasting and their best pitch for a podcast was one that I don't do any of because it's not the easiest. I, I'm not saying I don't like it. It's not the easiest. It's this idea of, oh, I'll do one in Phoenix, Arizona, and it'll be the Phoenix show or whatever. And right. I will talk to restaurant. Yeah, yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll talk to restaurant owners and they'll get to know me and I'll interview local people. I'll make a show about the community. I'm not saying I don't like this. I think it's great. I think a larger firm that has the resources could be really positioned for a branding play like this. You're just providing general good information to the community, generating that goodwill, but that's a long play. You want to yeah. talk about not turning into money quickly? That's one. You're going to spend a lot of money up front. I think it's probably long-term a great play. But for somebody who is looking to convert clients and and build their brand a little faster, that that's a tough one. And that was this, you know, I've seen illegal marketers say, I don't think podcasting is a good area for lawyers, but that was their idea. Like, this is how you could do it. And being in this space and having clients that are using this really well, uh, it, it, it was interesting to see. When you get into a market and you've been in it a long time, it's really easy to get mired down and see things the way that you have always seen them. And I think that it's dangerous to think you know everything. And I'm not trying to throw stones because that's going to be me one day on something. It probably is today. I'm missing something. And that's okay. But that's where I, I try to remember that when I see that. Like you – don't know where your blinders are because they're blinders. And uh, yeah, a hundred percent. I learned a lot from you. Like I, like when I first met you and 
I was like, wow, I'm doing all this wrong. Like I got a <laughs> background. I've got to, you know, like I got to get a better mic. I got to get, you know, all this kind of other stuff because like I'll do the podcast from here, my office. I'll do it from my home studio, which is a music studio. The sound's better there, but it's still, you know, it's not like you, what you've got set up there is so stylized. And so uh, it's very branded, which is really good too. And the lighting and everything that you got going on, it's very well done. And I was like, I just went over to my people and I was like, I was like, we got to do better. You know, and that's just an example. Like, I'm always like, okay, I've got to do a better introduction. I've got to do a better close. I've got to do, I've got to ask the right questions. And and the thing is, is that you're always learning. Like, you're always trying to get better. And that's part of it. And that's part of anything. You know, you're trying to get better at, at your craft. And, you know, it's funny, like, I didn't, I didn't have a passion about podcasting. As a matter of fact, uh, it was my son who used to work here that was like, we got to do a podcast years and years ago. We're on our, you know, we're at almost 300 podcasts now. Um, and he was like, I'm going to make you the next Joe Rogan. And I didn't even really, I was like, Joe, oh, Joe Rogan, the guy that does the TV. He's a the Fear Factor person. guy? Yeah, the Fear Factor <laughs> guy. I, I didn't even really know he had a podcast. I wasn't into him at all. And I was like, you sure? Okay. You know, just another thing for me to do. So I just kind of walked into it backwards. But I've gotten better along the way. But boy, would I have liked, you know, in hindsight to have met you and just say, let me just do you show me how to do it. And I'll just pay you to, to help me do the hard stuff like and I'll just be the personality. And that's what you offer. That's what you offer lawyers is they can just be the personality, be themselves. Um, and you take care of all the rest of it, which is yeah. great. I, I think the important part here is you didn't have any of that, but you did it anyway, and you have gotten tremendous value. You didn't have the perfect microphone. You didn't have the lighting. You didn't have all of the, the bells and the whistles. But the thing is, I didn't either. This is, I mean, I got this good mic, which says a lot about my personality. I should have a $300 mic 30 days after I listened to my first podcast, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but, but I didn't need it, but I started really um, simple for the most part, but that is okay. It's okay because look at you, you're, you're uh, more than a couple hundred episodes in and you've gotten all this tremendous value without making sure everything was just perfect and yeah, the most professional right. it needed to be. And that's the lesson that I want other people to remember is like, don't buy all the things and do all the planning and making it like the most impressive Joe Rogan product it can be. Start it, create yeah. something of value, say valuable words, because that is what's valuable about the podcast. The rest of it comes. So um, I encourage everybody that has listened to this um, to talk to Robert and his team about, you know, if you're interested in doing a podcast or even just like, hmm, you know, maybe I should, should I do it or, or just the least bit interested or you feel like you're being forced to do it. Um, talk to Robert, you know, and uh, he can save you a bunch of headaches a bunch of money. I'm not even, and like, I know you have different tiered plans and it depends on the size of the firm and all that kind of stuff. Um, so what is the best way for somebody to get in touch with you? Uh, you can email me directly, Robert at lawpods.com. I am always happy to talk, but you can also directly book time on my calendar. You just go to lawpods.com. But if you type lawpods pretty much anywhere, uh, you're going to find us. That was, uh, that, was my, that was my strategic marketing mindset from day one. Um, it's brilliant. I'll, it's brilliant. Great job on the marketing. And, you know, you what what you weren't able to do uh, in being a lawyer, you have certainly done it very well being a marketer. I appreciate but, that. I, I tell people frequently, um, you're, you're, you're much better off having me as your podcast um, marketing consultant than having me as your attorney. Yeah, very well. <laughs> Robert, thank you so much for being on the world of marketing. Um, I look forward to working together on more, you know, mutual clients. You know, uh, I hope that everybody that listens to this reaches out to Robert uh, to get more information about doing your own podcast. Because you yeah, can it was, it was such a pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. Okay, buddy. All right, everybody, you have a wonderful day and we will see you soon.